Strange Mind 6. I'm your host, Ruby, and today we're going to be getting back into the Octonumi. So, if you haven't already, grab your snack, grab your drink, or sit back, relax. Hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe now. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? This is The Octonumi by Trevor Allen Forrest. And what exactly was I supposed to do? Eyes darting between the two boys and what appears to be a metal monkey. Arthur Farrell, night guard at the museum for the last six months, listens as his captors discuss his fate. Ordinarily, he would have fought these two whippersnappers 40 years in the SAS wasn't for nothing. No, sir. He could still take any man, or woman for that matter, he thinks, glancing at the young lady to his left. Yes, any one of them, given a fair chance. Not for nothing was he employed at the gallery. No, siree. Top of his game, even in retirement, asked personally to take charge, tracked him down, they did, those special service blokes, sought him out, found him at this cabin, which was impressive considering its remoteness, and the fact that it was and had always been completely off-grid, as had he these past 15 years. Yep, mighty impressive although somewhat unfortunate for the three agents in their black trench coats, fine suits and dark glasses, that he was a little the worse for wear, having been up all night finishing a project for his sister. Yes, sir, if he'd not slept in, then he would have got to them a mite quicker. Still a night in a deep pit never killed anyone. Admittedly, one had managed to break his ankle. One was knocked clean unconscious and the other cried like a baby. Who knew someone could be so afraid of the dark? Still, injuries aside, nothing more lost than a little dignity, which Arthur concedes, somewhat reflects his current predicament. How did he, Arthur Farrell, manage to get caught so off guard? He knew something was going on the minute he looked at that painting. If nothing else, Arthur knew his art, and he knew that there was something different about that particular work. He'd thought this a few times about several of the paintings in the time he'd been at the gallery, and not just the paintings. Some of the other exhibits in the museum were a little questionable at times, almost as if they were living, breathing. He had put it down to not knowing his stuff. So he made it his personal mission to know his stuff, to know just what he was looking at. Oh, and how Arthur looked, really looked. Not like most who visited the museum, streams of disengaged faces en route to the gift shop. They had no idea what they were missing. So when he looked at that painting, he knew for sure that something was not right. Nothing obvious, you understand. Nothing you could pinpoint, almost as if something were hiding amongst the painting. 
squeezed in between the brush strokes, a kind of presence bringing it alive. So he waited until it was quiet, quieter than the usual quiet, a muffled quiet that would come over the building as if as it often did. And he took his moment, and then, and then, he's here. Unable to move, listening to his captors, discussing what to do with him. Not bring him with us, that's for sure, Reg said. It was a knee-jerk reaction, Trad replies, as they both look at the guard. Jerk reaction, definitely, Reg agrees, eyeing the unfortunate man now frozen in the action of flinging open doors, armed with truncheon and torch unspoken words trapped on his lips. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see you coming up with any bright ideas. Addressing the guard, Chad says, Sorry, mate. Panics. And offers a smile. Phoebe gives a smile and a small wave as she bobs around. Well, I suppose it's too late now, Reg says, signaling for the others to follow him. Yeah, Mum will know how to deal with it, Trad adds. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Reg grins, chanting quietly, Trad's in trouble, Trad's in trouble. Grow up, Trad snaps, pushing past his brother. Vivi, yeah, grow up. Vivi scowls, opening the door and stepping out onto the wooden veranda. Trad smiles up at his, at his mother as one by one the group file out and start jumping from the small doll's house onto the floor of Marjorie's office. Wait, wait! Marjorie cautions as she hurriedly readjusts the room to allow for the influx of people. Satisfied that the room will now accommodate them, she signals for them to continue. So... Grace says, slightly bewildered, looking back from the neat little veranda to the neat little house and then out into the room beyond. We got into a doll's house? How? The word doll. A deep, gruff, voice addresses Grace would imply that it is the home of a doll. The owner of the deep gruff voice was the polar opposite of a doll. Unless, of course, you were referring to a muscle doll. One with a striking Welsh accent. Now then, do I look like a doll? He asks, his biceps barely contained within his clothing. Vivi Gilbert. Vivi throws her arms around the huge man, snuggling his bristles. You live here? Grace asks, more than a little surprised, given the quaint Victorian decor and furnishing they had just passed. This is my home, young lady. Yes. So now I'm a borrower. Sighs. Vivi uh -oh. mutters.
this. Do I look like my clothes are made from scraps or discarded rubbish now then? He smooths the deep blue velvet jacket, brushing the satin labels and adjusting his cravat. Sorry, no, of, of course. Hi, Gilbert. Chad steps in and shakes his hand. Sorry for the intrusion. Oh, pleasure, Boyle. Anytime. Just wish it was under better circumstances, what with. I see you have met Grace. Gracie. Trad cuts in. Nate's daughter. IR? He hesitates. Yes, yes, I have. And that pleasure, yes. Good. Well, Gracie. Gilbert, here, will keep you company while we just... He indicates the stream of people lining up on the veranda. That's okay, isn't it, Gilby? Well, great, thanks. Trad says, as he walks away, BB bobbing alongside. I... Gilbert starts to protest, but instead watches as Trad and Reg line up and help to launch people over the side, one by one. Quiet, quite the social butterfly. Gilbert Allen Jones operated an open house policy when it came to his friends and family. Trad and Reg were considered both. This is itself, this in itself, not always the case with actual family. However, the unexpected visitor now standing on his veranda fell into neither category. It's like a slide. Grace chuckles. With no slide, Gilbert points out. <laughs> yes, she says. Taking a sidelong look at Gilbert, she wonders. How he manages to get anything to fit him, let alone such fine head-to-toe tailoring. But still, they were supposed to be good at sewing. So... Gilbert cuts in through her thoughts. In answer to your question, young lady, this house is but one of a network of such establishments, see? turning away from the activities. He continues, linked to proved safe passage throughout the instruments, and as most instruments are not size friendly for my people then, he gestures the house and the large room beyond. It would be rather impractical for us to try to exist in a world so much bigger than ours, now wouldn't it, see? Yeah, she chuckles. I've seen the film. If, young lady, you are referring to that attempt at recreating... Gilbert, let's not upset our guests now, shall we, my lovely? The resemblance between Gilbert and the elderly silver-haired woman who joins him suggests she is his mother. Barely half his size in every direction. Blodwin Lilia Jones smiles affectionately up at him as she wraps her arms around his. My Gilby becomes quite upset. She continues, patting his arm. He has never quite got over the misrepresentation of our people. Does it look like we live in the walls? He snorts. Now, now, my lovely. You know as well as I do that Mary was only protecting us, see? She looks at Grace. I mean, really, what would have happened if people thought these little houses 
were real homes to real beings. Thank goodness the Amunrathians take no notice of their children, she laughs. Then there would be trouble, mind. Shaking her head, she smiles at Gilbert. We had to live somewhere in the story, now didn't we? For our own protection, she changes the venue. That's all. But in the walls, under the floor, he cuts in, and she made me a merch. That's girl to English folk, she informs Grace. Anyway, she continues, you were rather undecided at the time, as I remember. She smiles, and you've certainly made up for it now, haven't you? She says, squeezing his arm. Overcompensating, if you ask me, she says to Grace. Mom! Gilbert removes his arm. Well, I'm just saying, that's all. This muscle building, when we both know... Mom! Fine. She smiles, holding up her hand. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love you, no matter your choices, my lovely. Yes, Mom, I think we've got it. Just saying. She continues, smiling at Grace. He secretly loved it all, you know? At the time, we were quite the celebrities among our kind. She made us English! Gilbert splutters. There, Grace cuts in. There are more of you? Um, Grace gestures the pair, struggling to find the right words to describe them. People, Gilbert suggests. People, she smiles. And they all live in houses like this? There are, and they do, yes. Gilbert replies, curtly. And in Fethris? Of course. In Dolls... Grace hesitates before correcting herself. Small houses? As I said, and you haven't seen them. You haven't been seen. I mean, you know, walking, talking, being... People? Gilbert offers again. Don't be a tease, Gilby, his mother chides. Fethris is the only insomnia that poses a threat, she replies to Grace. So we are seen when we choose to be seen, she pauses. Hence our friendship with Mary. And when you don't, we have our ways, Gilbert mutters, as in... We are able to be very, very still. He pauses. Very still. He repeats. Just to make sure she fully understands. When the occasion requires it, of course, the children are not the problem. So much freer with their minds. With those adults. Now, now, Gilby. Not all of them. You'd be hard pushed to find Amunarithians who wouldn't go into meltdown if they knew of our existence, which would probably involve melting us down. Always with the dramatics, his mother smiles. How still, I'm sorry, how still do you get, Grace asks, in one moment, a smooth, plastic film works its way over Gilbert's entire body. Wow! Grace says, tapping the shell. But I can still see you breathing. As the shell melts away, he says, I said still, not dead. 
But, however, if you were not my size, well, I wouldn't see it, she nods. Exactly. Unless you were a child. Nothing escapes a child, Gilbert's mother adds. Okay, Trad calls, as the last group readies themselves on the veranda. We're good to go. Always a pleasure. Gilbert, when you're ready, Grace, Reg adds, trailing off as he and Trad offer a little girl some help. I, the little girl says stubbornly, can do it myself. She wriggles free, and before Trad can grab her, runs off the edge of the table, waving as she free falls on her back to the floor, flipping upright before landing. That picture, Grace says, wandering over to the boys, watching the little girl resize and wait patiently for her mother, is hanging in the... So? Trad says. So how come Ellery has it? Come to think of it, how come she has all the masterpieces? Some of which I might say are deemed missing. Copies. Trad replies, helping another over the edge. She's a forger? Grace asks, stunned at the prospect. Oh, Ellery won't like that. Reg chuckles. Like what? Ellery demands, bringing the children out of the house. The ball at all, Vivi says, hovering behind Trad. Grace here thinks you're an art forger. Reg laughs. Really? Ellery says, looking over. Grace as if she were dirt on her shoe, which probably would be preferable at to being at the end of Ellery's stair. Each painting has a double, Ellery states. A double? Grace repeats, yes. Like everything else, you know, created here, recreated there, but they are never exactly the same. Some artists capture more than others. She smiles at the flitting thought. Of course, art is indispensable for your Tveric Valeritiers. Tveric Valeritiers? Good grief, girl. Are you going to repeat everything I say? She takes a breath. Yes, between insomnets. So in fact, you have the originals. Yes, I suppose I do, she replies absently, looking around to make sure all of her charges are safely in Marjorie's office, and resighs and adds, I think we are the last. So, Grace cuts in, do you need both to travel? What? Yes, N no. Rubbing her brow, Ellery mutters to herself, how your mother deals with these people, turning abruptly to face Grace. She speaks as if to a child. I think, my dear, you just stop asking questions. Have you not caused enough trouble What, with your... It's easier, Chad says, hurriedly stepping between the two and gently guiding Ellery towards the veranda edge. To Variks. He pauses. Tavarics are more, shall we say, fluid. He smiles. To have two paintings the same is a direct route. But travel between two different paintings is possible, yes. Look, Reg cuts in. When we get to HQ, yeah, I know, she says. I still don't see how we got. The gallery was in the same museum as the houses. 
You stupid girl. Ellery snaps, stamping her feet and spinning around. Do you not pay attention to anything? Ellery. Reg says, reaching for her arm. I'm going. She snatches up her arm and in the same movement jumps off the veranda. The gallery was in the museum. Chad starts to explain, watching her go. That also houses a collection of homes. Gilbert comments. And this house is in both. Trad adds, which, Gilbert informs her, is one of many transportation hubs for our kind. I realize it happened a bit quick, Trad smiles, but you know, I had to think fast, so he clicks his fingers. I teleported us to Gilbert's corresponding house in the museum, and here we are. Along with the security guard, Gilbert reminds him. <laughs> Trad smirks. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. What wasn't supposed to happen, young man? Gilbert mother cuts in. Was the use of teleportation in Fethris? Yeah, about that, Trad says hopefully. If you are about to suggest that I keep this from your mother, Gladwin smiles. I expect she already knows. Right, Trad says, glancing back at Marjorie's busily welcoming people. Okay then, Grace says, still not sure she understands. Don't take it personally now, Gilbert says, touching her shoulder. Ellery's outburst. We are all a little tense. Well, Gilbert, she says, looking at the drop to the floor. If it's any consolation, this is nothing like the film. Of course not. He replies tardily, removing his hand. It was a film, not a documentary. Right then. Grace says, taking a deep breath. Okay then, better get on with it. And lurches for the table's edge. No, not you. Reg says, as he and Trad grab an arm each. While VB pulls her jacket collar. We are dropping off, not staying. Oh. Okay, let's go. Trad says as he heads back into the little house. Um, are we not forgetting something? Reg asks, stopping in his tracks. Trad slowly turns to the guard, still at the bottom of the stairs. Can he stay there till we get back? No. But no. Shh, no. Smiling ruefully at the very pale guard, Trad gently lifts the motionless man with tendrils of air, guiding him out of the hallway and placing him outside on the veranda. Snapping back his energy, he slams the door shut that's big of you, Reg says. I'll level it with mom later. Later? Vivi, Vivi. Yeah, later. Vivi adds. Later when? Reg asks, following Trad into the house. Later, when she's found out there is a non-member in the Octonumi, from Fethris no less. Or later, when she's trying to explain to the poor guy what the hell is going on. He pauses for a breath. Or, yeah, yeah, all of them. Come on. We still have people to find. And that, my dear friends, is the end of this chapter. I do hope that you enjoyed it. 
and definitely come back for the next chapter. We are almost done with the book and I cannot wait to hear your feedback and what you think of it. So this is Ruby signing off my dear friends. And may you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening to this video. This is Ruby, signing off for